just like everybody else on the panel, I have my practice wife, uh, you know, the first, the first wife. Um, <laughs> but uh, one, one thing that, you know, we haven't addressed is that toxic <clears throat> doesn't necessarily mean abusive. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. uh, hurtful. You know, some people, you know, it's some of the types of toxic people like the criticizer, you know, or the people that plays the victim. If you get two of those people together, they can their toxicity grows with each other. Yeah. But now when you're growing up with a toxic person, whether it be a parent or somebody that's close. The, the main thing that you can take from that is to learn from it, because as a young person or as a child, there's nothing much you can do about it. And if you let it affect you, it will affect you in your young adult life until you can change that. And the faster you can change the example that you were maybe brought up with or saw growing up, the better off you'll be. Because one thing I, I make no bones about admitting is in my relationship, I was probably the toxic one because I was very short tempered. I uh, wasn't very emotionally intelligent at that point in my young 20s, which most men aren't, which my biggest vice to guys today, if you're going to get married, wait till you're at least 30. Because I, I think the studies are ring true that females do mature a little bit faster than than males. And so when you, you marry the high school sweetheart, when you know each other in and out, you really start to take each other for granted especially when you've been together for a decade, 12 years and you're, you're toxic and you know, you don't even know it. So, and a lot of it for me is not blaming, but it's because what I saw growing up, I thought that's the way it was supposed to be, you know, growing up in a lower to middle-class family, you know, you think you're supposed to come home pissed off from work every day because you just hate your job and hate yeah, everything. And I wasn't even in that position that I didn't hate my job, but I still treated life like that, if that makes sense. So for me, learning from the experience and from the people, because a lot of times it's, if it's immediate family members, you can't change the stripes on a tiger. So as, as long as you can forgive, but not forget, but then learn from the experience and not apply it to your own life, I think that's probably the most important thing that you can take out of it. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely uh, uh, agree wholeheartedly with that it's uh you know especially the family dynamic is always interesting right whether it's uh, you know your parents or you know your siblings or cousins right or extended family right your in-laws right because i'm sure everybody has in-laws that they all just absolutely love and just have nothing bad to say about right but that's where the holidays right gets to be a real super stressful time for a lot of people because uh you know they do come from an environment of uh you know unfortunately like toxic people and you know when we're saying toxic usually it's more of like around uh you know a sentiment of strong negativity throughout their their actions um you know the way in which they interact with the world or the lens that they view the world through i know for a lot of you guys that are you know on your path and you're trying to stay focused and come up it gets really hard to stay focused when you're in that environment or again they've done a ton of studies to show like you know stress especially for you know, kids as they're growing up, like you know, humans in general, when you live in a stressful environment, it does have deep psychological effects on you. So, you know, for me, what I've found to be a very effective strategy with uh, dealing with toxic people is one, you have to accept it where it's like, hey, these people are who they are. I'm <coughs> not really going to like change them or, you know, try and come and show them light or this, that, or the other. But uh, two, prioritizing, uh, you know, my own self and making sure that, hey, I need to make sure my mental sanity and my productivity keeps me on my path. Because at the end of the day, uh, you know, toxicity from other people will be a distraction that can knock you off and drag you down and de develop you into that type of person that you really don't want to be. Um, and then the third part is, you know, just trying to mitigate your time wherever possible. You know, for some of you, right, you're at home and you know not necessarily the best situation or best environment and so there's not much you can really do on that front and that's unfortunate but fortunately there are a lot of resources out there and with uh you know the power of the internet there are communities out there where you can reach to get some type of outlet before you can get uh you know onto your you know, your own pathway and sometimes you know you have to take uh take action so for me um, you know, an example I use is an example of uh, my mom. So she was uh, an orphan and grew up in a, the foster care system in the 1960s, which 
at the time was a very wild and drastically different thing than uh, what people think of it now. You know, at the time it was very much like people can just drop their kids off at the orphanage because they, oh, well, we just don't want to like have them at the home. We'll come visit them once a month. And then, you know, they'll be like crying and screaming, like, you know, why can't we go home? But, you know, we're just, so it was a very, very different era. And so very abusive background, uh, you know, place, uh, just not a good, good spot or situation. But then, you know, at, at 15, she legally emancipated herself and put herself into college because she knew education was going to be her ticket on the way out. And so from there, she did that, never looked back. So for me, that was always like kind of my example, sort of like growing up where I was like, damn, like, I think I'm like doing bad or whatever. It's like, oh, I was kind of a badass, like doing this, this, and this. Uh, but I also internalized a lot of those, uh, you know, lessons because again, I've you know had toxic family members that I've had to deal with. Where it's like, okay, I just need to limit the time and not, you know, ensure that I'm not enabling the situation and enforcing personal boundaries is definitely something that, uh, you know, not necessarily saying like you have to get physical or get into a fight, but you do have to let people know, like, um, you know, hey. This is kind of like where my personal line is. So at least there's a little layer of resistance. So they kind of know, like, if they're going to bump up against it, it's not necessarily going to be smooth sailing. 